What's up everyone? I hope you're having a fantastic day. As we get started in today's video, we can all agree that the outcome of the Vericium case could potentially give guidance to XRP holders who are looking for answers on what will happen to their assets. Attorney John Deaton, who is representing 67,000 XRP holders, spoke a little about this on his Twitter feed. Many people have asked what might happen if Ripple loses the lawsuit and is deemed a security. XRP holders who have been waiting for an answer on how the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit will conclude haven't got a satisfactory answer to this question yet. And when asked this same question by one of his Twitter followers, Deaton said, it's up in the air. To be honest, Deaton admitted as he offered an educated guess on how things might go down in the event that XRP is deemed a security. Most likely, the status quo would remain in effect during an appeal. A buyback could be arranged for those in the U.S. I know the SEC offered a buyback of the very token, but I do not know the specifics. I was referencing the Veritium case. My understanding is that the SEC seized 98% of the very token. The SEC created a fund from the money it seized and offered very holders a buyback if they sold the tokens back to the SEC at a set price. As always, welcome back to Moneyside, your favorite crypto news channel. If you're new here, welcome to the XRP Army. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our daily crypto news updates. Now, besides all that, attorney John Deaton in an interview with Paul Barron Network, he comments on the class action situation as he's the one representing all of the XRP holders in this case. Listen closely. But well, where we're at right now is uh, next week, I believe on Tuesday, there are what Daubert motions are being filed. And in this case, there are 16 experts, basically eight experts on each side, eight for the SEC, eight for Ripple. And you're allowed to challenge the uh, the methodology, if you will, of an expert witness. And I won't get into any specific names because that's all being litigated, but Ripple uh, can challenge, you know, an expert who's going to claim that, you know, XRP's price is correlated with an announcements of Ripple and things of that nature to try to show this common enterprise. And um, the SEC can challenge Ripple's experts. Uh, as amicus counsel, I've asked the court to be allowed and heard on this issue because there is an expert who's gonna testify as to what the reasonable XRP holder would have thought, believed, uh, when acquiring XRP. And so we're right. waiting to hear the judge's decision on that. Uh, after that, um, we're in the summary judgment phase. And the summary judgment phase is basically both sides are going to agree on certain facts and that these are indisputable facts. And then they basically make the argument whether or not XRP is or is not a security. And those motions are initially due in uh, September and then the responses are due in November and so the bottom line is by the end of November of this year it will be in the judge's lap and the judge will then be looking at all the evidence looking at all the motions and papers that have been filed and then making a decision. The SEC lawsuit against Ripple is set to stretch into 2023 after a proposed schedule for summary judgment outlined a much longer timeline. According to CoinGape, Stuart Alderati, general counsel for Ripple, asserted that the defendants and court are pushing hard to resolve this case as soon as possible. However, the commission is still sticking to their delay tactics. He also expects the resolution of the lawsuit in 2023. Alderati blamed the SEC for the rug pull for the XRP holders as over $15 billion market cap of the token was crashed the day the case was filed. He added that back in 2020, the SEC avoided court interference in order to pause XRP token trading in the country. However, he mentioned that this seems to be a joint filing, but going through the SEC's past record, the next iteration would have come very late if they wouldn't agree on this. Judge Netburn to make a, a ruling on the attorney-client assertion where the Hinman speech, there's 63 emails, there's 58 yep. drift drafts, there's comments. She had ruled that all those documents and emails and commentary uh, was relevant and should be turned over to Ripple. And uh, then the SEC 
you know, asserted attorney client privilege and said sure. that each and every one of those documents are privileged. And so if she rules, like I believe she will, that attorney client privilege does not pertain to all those documents and turns though and, and rules that those must be turned over. Then the SEC would file an appeal to Judge Torres and Judge Torres would affirm that decision most likely. And then right. because there could be doc, there could be stuff in those emails. Like I believe, Paul, there's no doubt that XRP was at least raised, even if it was one of the people saying, well, what about XRP? You know, if we're declaring ETH a non-security in this speech, what about XRP? You know, that kind of terminology or questions or commentary would basically hand rip away when and, and yep. most likely, especially on their fair notice defense. And so therefore, the SEC, you can't imagine why would they not settle? And now if that doesn't happen and they never have to turn over those documents, I believe we're going to get a ruling from the judge. And so I think that there that there's a good chance that Ripple outright wins completely on all sides of the uh, of the fence. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has also criticized this delay, saying that the regulators need to learn how to abide by their own rules. Everyone who's been watching the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit closely will agree with me that in recent months, the SEC has made many attempts to frustrate the release of emails. But as we have heard from John Deaton in this update, the court's decision on the emails of the former SEC official William Henman will arrive soon. After the SEC's argument on deliberative process privilege, DPP, dismissed by the court, the agency is now attempting to convince the judge that the documents demanded by the defendants were protected by attorney-client privilege. Following this, the SEC was asked to submit 10 documents to help the court make its decision. And in June, Judge Sarah Netburn held a conference call to go over the document release. As the XRP community waits for the court's eminent decision on what may be the SEC's last-ditch effort to keep the Henman documents away from Ripple, observers are on the lookout for clues as to how the case might generally play out. And as John Deaton pointed out, there's a very high chance that Ripple will win on all fronts in this case. But let's just wait and see how everything's going to play out. What, is this a good sign in, in the fact that they're beefing up their team for uh, for Ripple in general to essentially manage what kind of scenarios we're facing here with the SEC? We, meaning Ripple? I, I, don't, I don't put too much into it because, you know, a lot of these lawyers, uh, you know, these... Uh, these lawyers are young lawyers and they're they're helping on uh, the summary judgment motions. And mm -hmm. so I think it's really beefing up the team for what's ahead. I mean, this is this yeah. summary judgment motion that's being filed is massive and it is a tremendous amount of work. And just just take this into consideration. Brad Garlinghouse said that when all this is over, Ripple will have spent a hundred million dollars just on legal fees. Yeah. And so I don't necessarily read into, well, this lawyer was brought in. That means that they're not going to be a settlement. I think that they're just, um, you know, getting their ducks in a row for a massive, massive summary judgment filing that's going to take place. Now, just to get you up to speed on what Deaton is talking about here, let's head over to you.today. We can see an interesting article there that talks about Ripple adding two new attorneys to its legal team. If we look at the details, we can see that Ripple has added two Kellogg Hansen lawyers to bolster its legal team. The two newly added attorneys are Clayton J. Masterman and Kylie Cheezel who will represent Ripple in a legal battle against the SEC. Judge Annalisa Torres has granted their respective motions for admission to practice pro hack vice in the aforementioned case. Now, when most people look at this recent addition, all they see is the addition of new legal team members. But in hindsight, this means that the legal battle is likely to become more intense and could proceed for an extended period. And just last month, we had Ripple's CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, telling Axios that if the court rules in favor of the SEC, they would be moving their firm from the U.S. And as Garlinghouse shared in April, Ripple is already operating as if it has already lost the lawsuit. Therefore, they are focusing more on other markets outside the United States. It's been one hell of a roller coaster ride with the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. And at this rate, we can almost tell that the SEC might try and delay things further till the end of the year. But our hope is 
that the delays don't go past the first quarter of 2023. As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. Please keep in mind we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. You can always let us know what you think in the comment section below. And let's have a conversation. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.